I'm Bacon Ninja and today we're going to take a look at the best antenna setup for your analog mixing receiver in your goggles when you are flying things like this micro drone. This is the Tiny Hawk 2 by Emacs and these are the antennas I normally run. I run this VAS antenna and this Lollipop Mini. I normally run these on my 5 inch too, but is that the best setup I could possibly have? Have you ever been flying a micro like this Tiny Hawk and get some weird fading out on your video and your mixing receiver or maybe a failure to lock on like the receiver just isn't picking up the signal very well? Maybe you get some dim colors or some random snow that you don't get when you're flying other quads just when you switch to micros. Today we're going to take a look at what the best combination of antennas and orientation of antennas may be if you want to get the best quality out of your analog VTX in your micro drones. Now I've laid out a selection of some of the common antennas that you find on analog goggle receivers. We're going to take a look at those and then I'm actually going to get into the science of how the antennas work and why I think a specific antenna may be a better choice. So all of these antennas here are circular polarized antennas. Now there are two kinds of polarization when it comes to RF emission. One is circular and one is linear. We'll get into that here in a minute. But there's some various types of circular polarized antennas here. This is a very classic clover leaf. It actually came with my Eosheens. This came with my Eosheen EV800 DMs as well. This is a patch antenna, which is essentially just a PCB with a special circuitry on it that makes it receive right-hand circular polarized signals. This is a fox ear lollipop, very common, cheap antenna. This is as well a fox ear lollipop, just with a long stem and the mini. And probably the most expensive one on the bench here is this VAS right-hand circular polarized antenna. But I think none of these are the best bet for when you're running micro quads. I think this is the best antenna for your rapid mix or your rapid fire or your anything mixing receiver. I think this is it. And we're going to test this later, but let me explain to you why I think this is the antenna for you. If you look at what's actually in the Tiny Hawk, I'll look at it on the bench so you can see the actual VTX antenna. If you look way back in there, way back in the back there, that's the VTX antenna. You know, you'll notice that VTX antenna is actually laying on the quad in this direction. And what it looks like closer up is this. This is a sleeved dipole linearly polarized antenna. It is one of the simplest forms of VTX antenna you can get. And it's very commonly found on micro drones. So why are we running on our goggles circularly polarized antennas when we are flying micros if the antenna in the micro looks like that? Now to further discuss why I think this antenna is the best option when you're flying a micro with a sleeve dipole, I want to take a look at the physics of how electromagnetic radiation works and how RF waves are actually generated and received. Uh, I'm going to water the science down significantly here because A, I'm not an expert in RF emissions. It's not a field that I've ever worked in. And B, it's just gonna make sense for the video. So don't knock me on any technical scientific details. You physicists out there that are watching this, you can laugh at me, that's fine, I get it. But I am definitely gonna water it down. And I'm gonna to go to the point of watering it down to use this slinky, this child's toy, uh, to explain how some of the circular polarization actually works. Uh, so on the bench, let's take a look at a linear polarized RF signal. And for that, I've got this thing. So this is an analog that I'm gonna use for a linear polarization of a wave. Now you'll notice that if I hold it in this plane here, which let's call this the X plane up and down between my bench and the camera, it's completely flat. Like it exists in one plane. If I lay it in this plane, which would be the Y, then you can actually see the waveform going back and forth. And this would be the amplitude of the wave and the space between them is the frequency. So an antenna that would generate this kind of pattern is something like that. This is a sleeve dipole, like I said, and it is the kind of antenna you would use 
if you wanted to generate a linear polarized signal. This is also a sleeve dipole. This is the exact same kind of antenna that we have on our micros. So it generates this waveform of signal. Now if you are, let's, I'm going to take this, this uh, antenna, this, let's say you're transmitting with this antenna and you're getting this waveform here and you want to receive that with this antenna. If you lay them here in the same plane, you can see that the full amplitude of the wave can be received by the length of this antenna. Which means that this antenna is going to be able to receive the majority of the RF power that it possibly can for the distances transmitting along that plane. Now the problem with linear polarization is that if the quad turns and this waveform turns, there's kind of an issue here. <laughs> you can see that the wave is now basically just a straight line and it only intersects the antenna very minimally. So that means that the element here is only going to be excited by the cross section between this wave and the antenna. Now drones are very agile and drones like this Tiny Hawk, we're probably not doing a whole bunch of acro with flips and rolls and fun things. And that's one of the reasons they choose to put dipoles on these quads. They're not designed for heavy duty, far away acro. Also, the dipole is just way easier to produce and easier to tuck in a place like this. You don't have a big old circular polarized antenna hanging off of your quad. So it's very common to see linearly polarized antennas on the VTX of a micro. Now inversely, I'm gonna use this slinky to demonstrate circular polarization. And again, we're not gonna get super technical. So for this demonstration, we're actually gonna use the VAS antenna and this lollipop here. Uh, so these two antennas are gonna represent one be our transmitter and, and one would be our receiving antenna. Now, the thing about circular polarization is that you don't have to worry about cross polarization, which is when you have the planes intersect instead of a line with an antenna. This intersection doesn't exist in circular polarization because of the nature of the waveform, which, why I'm using the slinky, looks like this. Rather than a squiggly line, the wave actually exists in this spiral pattern as it's generated by the elements of the antenna. As they're excited and they are 90 degrees out of phase with each other, uh, the electromagnetic field actually spirals like this as it emits. So that means that no matter how you align the antenna, let's just lay this out real quickly. Ah, I can't get this to stay. We're gonna, we're gonna just hold it like this, right? You know what that looks like, but as you align the antenna, there's not a point at which this antenna is out of phase with the waveform. So you get essentially the benefits of polarization being aligned at all rotation axis, which is one of the nice things about circular polarization and why we use it so much on quadcopters. Um, another thing about circular polarization that is great, but it requires the transmitter to be circularly polarized is the multipath rejection. So each time a circularly polarized wave hits something, it actually reverses its polarization. Uh, and if it reverses its polar, like say it's a right-hand circular, circular polarized antenna on your transmitter, when it bounces off of something, it will bounce off as left hand, which means that your receiver antenna, which is also expecting right-hand circular polarization, is not gonna pick up that left-hand signal. It's just gonna be attenuated. So that's essentially how RF works when we're talking about quadcopters and the two forms of polarization that we use being circular and linear. Now, I talked about how the intersection of the antenna and the wave are very important. If they're out of alignment, you essentially lose 20 decibels. Uh, 20 decibels is a lot. Uh, three decibels is half the range. 20 decibels is basically fully attenuated. So at this, this antenna is essentially useless if you're talking about linear. Now you may be thinking, so a circular antenna on my receiver, I should be able to pick up those linear signals because they can, if, if this antenna can pick up in any orientation, the circular polarized signal, then it should be able to pick up a linear signal too. And you aren't wrong. So if we take a look at the intersection of these two things, you can see that 
this signal, regardless of its orientation, is going to excite an element in here because this element is designed to pick up rotating signals. So it's either going to pick it up on the X plane or the Y plane, but not both at the same time. Now, the reason that's still a problem and why this is probably not your best bet when you're using a micro with a linear antenna is that there are multiple elements inside of here set 90 degrees out of phase. So there's two elements set like this, 90 degrees out of phase, and they're expected to each be excited the same amount. So if you have this linear wave here, this handy dandy linear wave, you can meet one of the elements and excite it, but you can't meet both at the same time. So you're gonna attenuate some of your signal by picking it up with this if the signal is linearly polarized. And that attenuation can be noted at three decibels, which three decibels doesn't sound like a lot, but three decibels is actually half of the range of the antenna. So you're essentially, if say you have a 100 milliwatt VTX, or a, in the case of this Tiny Hawk, a 200 milliwatt VTX, and you crank it all the way up. If you're using this antenna and you've got the factory linearly polarized antenna inside of the Tiny Hawk, you're actually running that thing at 100 milliwatts. If you're at 25 milliwatts, that means you're at 12 and a half milliwatts of actual output power. Now, there's calculations behind this, and this is not the science, but for layman's terms, you're essentially cutting the power that your transmitter is sending in half by using this antenna to pick up a linearly polarized signal. So after taking a look at all the physics and the science and the watered down science that is that I gave you, about this whole thing. The whole point of the video is the antenna configuration I think you should be running on your mixing analog receivers and that is this configuration. You'll notice I only have one sleeve dipole on here and I have a circular polarized antenna on the other one. The reason for this is this particular quad the sleeve dipole inside of here is actually laying across the horizon. So by laying my sleeve dipole on the goggle across the horizon as well, I am in phase with it. So I have a really good likelihood of picking up the most signal when the antenna is sideways like this. Now again, the quad does flip around in the air and I don't go hardcore with this thing, but even as you pitch forward, you'll see that antenna kind of goes off at different angles. If you're pitching sideways, just a little bit of pitch, 25 degrees can make a big difference with phase alignment. And that's why I like having a right-hand circular polarized on there. Now, it doesn't matter about the direction of the circular polarization. I like the idea of a circular polarized antenna to back up my sleeve dipole because this one is going to pick up a lot of the reflections better than this one. So some of the reflections, say you're flying around the house, are not going to be in alignment with the polarization of this dipole. My batteries are going off in the background. Ignore them. I'm going to fly tomorrow. But some of the reflections coming off of this may get picked up, although half the strength that you would expect by the circular polarized antenna. So I think this is the best bet. Now you could try using two sleeve dipoles. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, if you want to run two sleeve dipoles, then you would run them one at 90 degrees and one with the plane. It is going to depend on your quad a little bit. Not all quads have the dipole mounted sideways like the Tiny Hawk. Some of them do have them going up and down, in which case you'd want to default to this. But I think this is the best setup to keep your mixing receiver from losing lock on. And if you've ever had that happen when you start up your micro, it's a real pain. A lot of times with this quad, if I have both of my circular polarized antennas on, I'll start it up and the colors will just fade out and then it'll beep like you can't lock on and then it'll kind of rolling screen and give me snow. Maybe it'll even go black and white. That's just because this antenna is only getting half of the signal possible and it's just not in the same polarization planes as the transmitter. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the whole thing. You might give this arrangement a shot and if you don't already have a sleeve dipole at home, I will leave a couple of links in the description. They will not be affiliate links because I'm not affiliated with anybody. For the cheapy dipoles, I'll give you a couple stores where I prefer to buy them from. Uh, but pick up a couple, give it a shot when you're flying micros. I think you might find that it works really well, especially if you throw two of them on and put them in different orientations. But if you only have one, give it a try with one circular polarized antenna 
And the circular polarized antenna doesn't, the plane doesn't matter as long as you're not in the null. That's the only place, the bottom and the top, where it can't pick up a signal. There's really not a whole lot as far as direction out this way. But let me know in the comments what your results are. Let me know in the comments also if you have any other preferences that you like when flying micro drones specifically when they have the small little linearly polarized antennas like this one. And until next time, I'll catch you later.